There are a lot of advanced design models available for analyzing structures uh, for fire. And we're going to be looking at one now for, called either the slab panel method or otherwise tensile membrane behavior developed by Clifton, the slab panel method, or Bailey and then taken by Najai and various others in terms of the tensile membrane behavior. So what I've got drawn here is a section of a composite building. So on top we've got a concrete slab and then below it we've got steel beam supporting it. So a cross section, there's our steel beam and then we have a concrete slab on top. It might be a profile deck or not. And if we want to save money on passive protection for steel work, because uh, passive protection can get very expensive, there are various models based upon full-scale tests on structures or, and smaller scale tests. And what we need to do is take our whole structural frame and have a look, and we need to isolate out our primary members. Because if we can make sure that our primaries, our primary beams there and all the way around, have enough capacity to carry the floor at the fire limit state, we can use them to carry the secondary beams. So I've got dashed lines showing the secondary beams of my view on my building. And we can just ignore test, um, protecting the secondary beams altogether. Because I'm just going to swap across to here because here's my floor. And normally what happens is the load at ambient temperature is carried by my secondary beams through to my primaries and then to the columns. So I have a bunch of secondary beams here, carrying it through to my primaries. But as the slab heats up, what happens is it deflects and the beams get weaker and the slab gets affected. But provided that I've got rebar that's protected, the rebar actually provides a lot of extra strength. The concrete is protecting it and we get the tensile membrane behavior occurring where even though you get large deflections occurring, so I'm just exaggerating the deflections of the floor, this floor basically hangs from the perimeter. So it creates loads on these perimeter beams all the way around. And even though those secondary beams may, what you might think is failing, um, they're well beyond what capacity they can take. They just hang. And in their hanging state, the rebar now starts picking up the load along with the residual capacity of our secondary beams, carry it to our primaries, from the primaries back to our structure. And so that gives us a useful design method, kind of similar to concrete design, where we design slabs using plastic analysis, where we can use a crack pattern, something like that, and design it for the, the slab to actually fail along those lines, and then we just need to work out the plastic capacity of our slab and our beams. And then there's various procedures that go into us, which we won't go into now. But ultimately, if I take a cross section through my uh, composite structure, that'll be two plastic hinges form and a third plastic hinge. My beam, um, or my slab, and the beams attached to it fail. They then put this into tension. And then my rebar and the floor, the residual capacity carries it, carries it to my supports. And here my beams, I protect these, they carry it back through to the, the columns and down. So the useful thing about this is we can reduce the amount of passive protection we require by somewhere between 40 and 60%, saving a lot of money on design, but still providing a safe system. So it's just one example of what you can start looking out for in a, a real design. If you've got a composite structure, try apply one of these methods and uh, you will require some extra reading and extra work to get the full understanding of it, but it's useful techniques for saving money whilst providing good sound engineering fire design. Thank you.